So Pastor Keith, thank yes. you very much and God bless you again. Thank you very much. Okay, what does uh, what does about uh, Bible say repentance? No, the most com common translation yes. of repent is turn. Yes, and that, that uh, is or return, right? Return. Yes, great. So two requests of repentance include and subject are to turn from evil. Exactly. This is a wonderful subject because you see what we see here is that it's like repentance is a chance for us to turn around to really yes. change our lives completely. It's not just a little change that we have to make. I mean, we are serving a holy God. Our God is a living God. I'm relaxing. <laughs> so we serve a living God, which yeah. means that he is holy. He sees us and Whereas we see the law, the law just gives us an idea about God and about His holy standards. But when we come to the real understanding of who God is, He is a consuming fire. So how can we now meet His standards and get to the level where He wants us to be? And this is why God has given us the Holy Spirit. He has really given us the authority, the power, the ability to change completely okay and and you see the holy spirit knows the mind of god he knows everything that we need to do and what we can do as believers is we can totally trust the holy spirit let him make the decisions let him give us the the feelings the emotions the the boldness the the character everything is in the holy spirit so people are afraid to let go and this is the problem it's a, it's a meaning of change of mind or uh... everything so um, so we get totally transformed like because now we can trust god and he has called us to be something really special and, and the holy spirit knows our calling see that's where we don't need to try and figure out our calling we don't need to think mm -hmm. Because the Holy Spirit has called us, God has sent us here with a plan, a purpose. And whereas before, what the problem with the old system, with the law, was that we had to sit there and try and figure it out and try to implement all these things. And even now, people are trying to do that with the New Testament. They're trying to read all the scriptures and memorize the scriptures and try to understand everything with their minds. But the Bible says very clear, 2 Corinthians 2.14, it says the carnal natural mind cannot understand the things of God. Yeah. So the Spirit of God is our best hope. And the way I see it is, you talk about repentance. Let's say repentance is turning around 100%, 180 degrees. So geometrically, if I was going north, I'd be going south. Mm -hmm. The opposite direction. But how do I do that if it's not just a geometric direction? Because if I'm going to become who I'm supposed to become, and I'm going the opposite way because I'm, in, I'm calm, I'm thinking, okay. and I'm trying to work out my salvation with my mind, which the Bible doesn't say to do that. It doesn't say to work out your salvation with your mind. It says to work out your salvation in fear and trembling. So therefore, how am I going to do that if I'm using my mind? And this is where we need to be. We need to get an idea, a vision of repentance, and the, the, this is the good news, is because of the Holy Spirit, repentance is easy now. Mm -hmm. You know, Jesus said, come unto me, all you who are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. You see, at the end of the day, people don't believe this, but it's so easy to repent. It's so easy just to let go and let the Holy Spirit take over let him help you. He's going to give you joy in your heart, even under persecution or even when you're being convicted yourself about something. There may be some godly sorrow involved, but he will sort out your emotions so that, I mean, you're not going to get depressed. You're not going to get overcome. You're not going to become stressed. Everything is smooth. When the Holy Spirit is bringing you to a place of a new dimension, a new character, a new personality comes out. We see this on the day of Pentecost when Peter started preaching. And he was totally different. Before, just a few days before, he, he denied the Lord three times. Pastor, we are in the world. Sure. Okay. Okay. We are, for example, we are an evangelist uh, because we are a full-time ministry. Yep. But we are reading the news, uh, sorry, Bible, we are uh, always prayer and we are ministering. 
But who is the word? Okay, maybe are, they are the believers, okay? Who is the word? But maybe 10 hours, 12 hours, they are the duty. Yeah. Okay. And after maybe or one hour, maybe they are, uh, they, are, they are the praying time or they are uh, spend time for the God, right? So how they can depend all time in the Holy Spirit? Yeah. And the thing is... The because good, they have the family life, they have exactly. a busy life. Sure. They have the business maybe. Absolutely. They have the job. You know? Correct. How they can they can depend the Holy Spirit? Because you said no repent. Yeah. Okay, we can repent maybe if we are uh, lying to the business people. No? Sure. Okay. We are lying to the clients actually. Yes. Sometimes we are lying to the customers. Maybe we we are pleased to their uh, obvious uh, sins. Like obvious sins. Yes. Okay. Same time they are repent. Okay. Sure. Sometimes they come back and uh, sit with the God and uh, ask God, God uh, forgive me. But they like to maybe they like to go follow complete Holy Spirit. But when yeah. they are with the word. Because they are doing some duties. They are you know sure. they are they are family background. Sure. So how? They can follow, come build the yeah. Bible, the, the Holy Spirit. See, we have to change the way we operate. It's like in a computer. You can have, you can have one computer and it has one operating system, like say Windows, and you have another computer that's operating in Linux or something. You, you know, people need to understand the operating system of the world and of the natural man is to look and see, analyze with his mind, think gather all the information and then make a decision. That's the normal way that a human being works. I mean, when I say normal, I mean natural. I mean, without God, you have no choice, but you have to think. You have to calculate, you have to consider all possibilities and try to do good. That's the way, but we must repent of that. You see, God knows what really is good. We mm -hmm. think we know what's good, but even Jesus said, only God is good. So this is the, the real way. So only God is good. You see, this is the point that we don't actually trust God. And when we change operating systems, that please, if we use the, 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 the explanation of repentance as if I'm going north, I'm going south. We can understand that because it's just a change of direction. But in the, in the spiritual realm, We've got to change from operating this way with our minds, with our intellect, with our thoughtfulness or our own understanding. Stop trusting that own understanding and turn around and trust the Holy Spirit to make the decision. This is real repentance. And not this is not just for a few big issues. This is for every little issue. This includes the, the business world, the life at home, the problems that crop up, the issues, the arguments, the challenges, the finance, the all the things that you have to go through on a daily basis, the Holy Spirit can be involved. Repentant. Absolutely. So real repentance is you completely ask God everything. If we are teaching the uh, teaching the church or uh, teaching the person evangel, and I tell the people actually, you have to repent. Also, you ask, ask God, you are you are always you are always advised from Holy Spirit, ask Holy Spirit whatever you are doing, even simple things, um, big things. But now uh, they are saying, okay, Pastor, maybe one month, two months, or one week I can follow this one because he's a he's a person. Yeah. But he, he cannot. There is no figure. For example, you are in front of me. Yeah. I am doing some scene. Okay. Okay. I am, I am playing my mobile. Yeah. Or I am watching the angry or, or then you can advise me. This is wrong. Okay, uh, you say one time, two times, say, I understand. Sure. But these people ask me, uh, when I when I in the scene, when I am in the scene, uh, because there is the Holy Spirit, but there is no personality. It means uh, I cannot see the Holy Spirit. Sure. Okay, sometimes Holy Spirit say, okay, don't do it this one, don't do it this one. Sometimes they are repenting, repent, repenting. <laughs> and after that, <laughs> two, three, seven, five, ten, ten times, then they cannot hear the voice of the Holy Spirit. Yes. They they are continuing this one. They are watching the movie, they are watching the ugly film, so they are watching the sure. always uh, in the mobile. Yeah. Because Holy Spirit is there, but still they cannot recognize. Yeah, they can't recognize. Okay. This situation, how sure. they can how they can yeah. uh, manage uh, this well, because this happened going on. Yeah. Because now ninety nine people, even ghostly people also on uh, addict of the mobile. Yeah. Added of the watching TVs, added of the uh, internet, right? Exactly. So, okay, Holy Spirit is always asking, come to back, come back, turn, turn back, turn back, or repent. Sure. Many times they repent. Maybe sure. they are fasting. 
but still in the weekend I mean the weekend goes to you again sure God knows why that sin reoccurs in your life he knows where you open the door to Satan he knows the fantasies that you had in the beginning say you have this problem with lust or looking at wrong movies or just preoccupying yourself with so much he knows what initiated that what opened the door what what area of your life that you played with and, and somewhere you have to accept that that there is some really nasty nasty past in you that if you don't deal with the sin will come back again and again it's a bit like a tree if you have a tree with lots of fruit on it those fruits are like the actual sins we commit but each of those fruits has a branch connected to it and if you follow it back it goes right down into the ground and that is the root of sin and, and the devil doesn't want you to get to the root of sin he doesn't want that he wants you to cut the branches and if you cut the branches of a tree more fruit comes because after all you've only fasted a little bit prayed a little bit tried to do your best read your bible some more and this is the typical shallow repentance of a believer and it leads to more sin and you feel more guilty you feel more shame because you're trying to be good but then more evil comes even paul said in in romans he said the good that i want to do i don't do it but the evil i don't want to do that i end up doing so it's a real so trap many believers call me or oh, believers this is past i tried to six days um very all life or seven day maybe alone i'm alone maybe i got boring you know i feel boring maybe i'm alone mm -hmm. at home sure so i watch maybe tv i just to uh, take the mobile okay i'm reading the bible i'm praying everything's there six day was he was a holy life i went to church everything but sometimes i take this one okay i saw this one picture or second picture maybe it goes to deep 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 then i go to that scene sure this is every week they are saying every week they are saying this you know then they will yeah. repent then they'll come back to god again sure. yes so well, so yeah. this kind of people how they they can recover yeah because It totally you no know, uh, deliver from and he says god i'm sorry and then he tries to repent now this is where the devil has really tried to stop people coming to the truth and it's not hard for him because the christians are so carnal but let's see like this if you believe in the holy spirit if you believe the simple illustration let's use just like praying if we do any activity a spiritual activity like reading the bible like praying praising god or all, all these activities are commanded or directed in the bible so every activity that you see in the bible that is told for us to do is a, what we call an anointed activity It doesn't mean you're anointed but it's an anointed work like pastoring if you're a pastor you can be anointed just because you're doing the work of a pastor but you yourself are not anointed i don't know if you understand mm -hmm. like when somebody stands up and preaches the word the word is anointed anointed okay but it doesn't mean the person who's giving no. the word is anointed okay. he may be a hypocrite he may have sin in his life but when the word comes forth out of his mouth the spirit of god witnesses to the word and so the work he's doing is anointed even though he's not anointed so anybody say for example they like you say six days a week they devote themselves to prayer and bible study and fasting and seeking god or doing the things of god in that time especially they can see the vision they can see the they dreams can. they will prophesy sure. and all they are doing the deliverance ministry everything sure. is there but they're active yeah And, and the point is if i'm doing something like that i'm not sinning it's like keeping oneself busy so i don't have time to sin if you understand i'm actually just avoiding sin because i'm doing something that is in the bible that god directs us to do but the failure of that system is this as soon as you stop doing your bible study as soon as you stop praying or fasting or deliverance ministry or whatever and you're going to be very tired if you've done it in the flesh or you're going to be very tired if you haven't really a very good foundation of humility and trust like for example I preach in 60 countries of the world I travel 60 60, 60 countries. countries but you see I'm not tired you'll notice this about me as I travel the world 
even as I was coming here, I had like three hours sleep in the plane. And then when I arrived there, they had a little few hours rest and then I'm straight into the meeting. And then I came here and I preached tonight. And then tonight I'm going again. I'm going to have a little sleep again. But you'll notice if you look at me, I'm not tired. But 60 countries, so God said to go 60 countries, right? Or That's just what he's doing in yeah. now. I mean, it may be next time, it might only be 30. Next time, it might be 20. So I, you ask God, you, I want God, uh, right? Absolutely. If, if God said no, we'll say God says no. 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 Yeah. So there is a guidance. How do you know this guidance actually? God spoke to you? Well. Or you are getting any visions or uh, in the thoughts you are yeah. getting? Yeah? No, it's, uh, it's like at the very basic level. We have to be sensitive to the Spirit. Now, even if you don't hear a voice, and we hear God's voice in our minds because the Holy Spirit is within that. So He puts thoughts in our minds. In the Old Testament, thoughts in the minds. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In the Old Testament, God spoke audibly to the prophets because there was no provision now, for many sin. Many times I happened this one. Uh, for example, I want to take a decision or a plan. Yeah. It's coming in my mind or thought. For I doubt it's the God, so it's a God voice. Then I, I, if I doubt, I call maybe any prophets or any, you know, who is, you know, just call them. Um, and I ask this advice actually, they will pray and they are saying same thing. Hmm. So, and also, same same time they are telling to me, it's, you are in the, it's in, it's, it's, it's in your mind already. Uh -huh. It's in your thoughts already. Okay, why you call me, call me again? I said this for a reconfirmation. <laughs> No, I don't work that way. What I, my, the man who trained me told me a long time ago, he said, you don't trust a man, you never trust a prophet, you never trust a pastor. What we all have to do, we all have to work out our own salvation in fear and trembling. So we have a calling, we have a divine purpose, we have to do what God's called us to do. He's not calling you to do what I'm doing. We're yes. all different. And and so we cannot compare ourselves one with another. What we have to do is rely on the Holy Spirit sometime, within us. Some, you fail at any time because of fear, if you're thinking about your God voice, maybe you thought it's a God voice or God telling to you. But when you're doing this one, maybe something failure come in your life. You no. can, right? I've never failed. I mean, no failure. Huh? I've never failed. For example, if the devil can block you or nothing. No, it's so whatever your thoughts came or whatever take the decision, it was final. Sure. It was a success. A success Absolutely. Done. I mean, because Jesus said, my yoke is easy, my burden is light. Now, it doesn't mean that Satan won't come and attack me. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's normal because, hey, if you're doing the will of God, Satan will try and stop you. That I see. But whenever he comes to attack me, and the scripture says, he comes one direction to stop you and God scatters him seven. So, I don't, I'm not surprised when Satan tries to stop me, but usually the end result is scattering. Mm. So after a while he gives up. After a while Satan doesn't want that kind of embarrassment every time he attacks me. So, but that is not because I'm praying. But, but in life uh, there's some striving also, right? Sometimes you're sure. struggling. But Sometimes. like for example, say we, we might have at home, uh, something's not working or you know, like the couple, last couple of days, have a situation at home. I'm traveling and the uh, boiler was malfunctioning or whatever, but I just happened to be at the right place at the right time. I had Wi-Fi access. I was able to help my wife call her an instructor and I'm not even seeing what the problem is, but the Holy Spirit told me, turn these two dials okay, and that will let the pressure through and the, the boiler, the system will work. And all I did, I prayed and the Holy Spirit gave me this vision of two knobs you need to change. And she changed them and it worked. Okay. So, so yeah, yeah. it's as simple as that. Simple as that. Part but, but you've got to, the, the condition, let me make it clear, because it's not going to work for you if you don't listen to the conditions. The condition is that you must put God first. Yeah, first God. Yeah, because let's be clear that then not only brain, then not only mind. Eh? Yeah, if you know, if you not deny yourself completely and take up your cross, this doesn't work. It doesn't work. And Jesus promised when he said, for example, he said, "I will never leave or forsake you." When he said that, he didn't say that to everybody. He said it to those disciples who were following him, who paid the price. They decided to forsake all. It didn't mean they give up their jobs, but he said they forsook all and they chose to deny themselves. They, they chose not to go after money. 
not to go after like a good life or success or or some, fulfill some vain thing they concentrate on his perfect will for their lives for example uh, i want buy something okay for example i want something why I, i want to buy something from the market so many days um, i want i want thinking i want thoughts i want buy this one buy sir okay for example how we can know this is uh, from god's spirit leading us yeah or this is from flesh yeah if it is flesh how we can recognize yeah well the first thing i believe that we need to do is like i said deny yourself forget yourself and we, we've got to see that god if he really loves us he's going to bring those thoughts to our mind right you see what you're saying is is a trap because what you're saying is i think and thinking is always wrong thinking leads to doubt thinking leads to unbelief thinking gives the devil access thinking leads to worry thinking does not come up with the answer mm-hmm. so when we think and we imagine or do something like that is never right but if I, the bible says this in psalm 46 verse 10 it says be still and know that i'm god so if you want to know god you cannot do it without being still in your mind it doesn't mean i'm not talking about emptying your mind yeah. please that would be wrong and my mind is has many things in it has great storage capacity the human mind is the best computer in the world by any standard it can store more information than the best computers in the world but sure they okay they turn back yeah. but after two three days or one week they come back again <laughs> so they are in the same scene but you see the thing is they haven't repented if you are doing something like that and you know it's wrong and the yeah. bible says in galatians the paul said like in yeah, galatians 519 he said that the, the fruit of the flesh is obvious yes so these are obvious sins but the person is okay he humbles himself he maybe comes to the realization this is wrong this is the best teacher then he does sin yes because let, let's let's use a song